and I'll never back down In the middle of the ring is where I lay the back down Against all odds, I will always prevail So when you step to me, it's like hell in the cell Greetings and salutations, this is Christopher Daniels. I'm talking to my main man Delzinski right now. Any video game show, any video game channel, any YouTube channel called Vintage Shizzle is indeed hashtag Daniels approved. Yo, alright guys, Delzinski here. It's another We Talk Weekend. And I'm joined by the returning, fresh from his uh, escapade at SummerSlam, Smack Talks. How are you doing, mate? All right, man. It's good to be back in the UK. How are you? I'm very good. I'm very good. Uh, tons of stuff going on since uh, SummerSlam, so it's an exciting week in terms of We Talk. It has been an action-packed week. It has. Uh, how was everything uh, in New York City? Very jealous indeed. It was absolutely amazing. Like I took it in all the sites, got to go to SummerSlam, and I even got to go to my first Ring of Honor event, which was really, really cool. Oh, yeah. That's where you represented uh, Delzinski Approved, didn't you? I did indeed. I was wearing the Delzinski approved t-shirt, checking out Field of Honor. So many good matches. Had the Young Bucks on there, which which is absolutely amazing to see in person. Some of the things I pulled off, it was just like trying to wrap your mind around it. It's just absolutely incredible to watch. Did you have a super kick party? They did. They had an absolutely <laughs> amazing super kick party. Took out the mascot and everyone. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, I love the Young Bucks. I bet they're awesome to see live. They were, they were so good. There's so many like great names on the card. And like a lot of the Ring of Honor, like people I'm not entirely up to date with, but just watching the matches, like it was an incredible show. So like the best feeding ground ever for WWE to pick up talent in still. Absolutely. If if they keep doing what they're currently doing and just continuing that trend, bring them in from Ring of Honor, we're in for a treat. Uh, how was SummerSlam itself as well? Obviously, you got to go to the show. I saw you did a couple of cheeky interviews or your your Bad News Barrett interview, which was very good. So, um, yeah, what was what was it like overall at the arena and everything like that? Um, it it was absolutely amazing. Like we had a press event for Two K Sixteen on the Thursday night, so that was where I got to meet um, Barrett and do an interview with him. Um, met a bunch of other YouTubers, um, played a game for a couple of hours, and then of course we had SummerSlam on the Sunday. And it was just absolutely amazing actually being over there and seeing the kind of response that you get from the American crowd. Because you know when you see like the crowd in the UK when you get raw and mm-hmm. it's like a really sort of, sort of raucous crowd and it's like really involved in it. Well, like I went over there like expecting it to be loud, but it was insane just how loud it was. I think like being in New York and being in Brooklyn, it was like the people there just so into it. It was such a good crowd and it was just amazing the sort of sound that was coming out of it really didn't expect it but it was an amazing experience well yeah i think the new york crowds have got to be one of the best crowds to go to just because they literally do tear the house down so yeah i i think that's probably one of the best shows to have gone to to be honest in new york city so i think you've done well i think i've really like hit me look <laughs> it was incredible Oh man, I'm glad you had a good time. We're going to be talking about SummerSlam a bit today. Uh, we've got quite a lot on the agenda to get through. I mean, we've got the return of the icon Sting. So that's like pretty exciting for me. <laughs> um, we've got uh, obviously interesting uh, kind of the aftermath of Brock Lesnar and The Undertaker. I mean, I don't really know what's going on there. I mean, Bo Dallas probably regrets interrupting the Beast. And then we've got a new member of the Wyatt family, uh, one Braun Strowman. So we've got that to talk about. And I haven't forgot the return of the Dudley boys. So tons, tons of stuff to talk about today on We Talk. There is there's so much. I wish I was there for Raw as well, because that Raw just seems to be an amazing show as well. I would actually say that it possibly was on or maybe a little bit better than SummerSlam. Really? Uh, yeah, just because of the just because of, of Sting. Yeah, possibly, but also Dudley's returning. There's a few shocking moments there, and not just controversial for the sake of being controversial. So you know, well, I, th- I think it's great. It's great to see them back. It's great to see Sting back. It's good to see he's back from the minor leagues. Mm, yeah. Well, let's talk about him. Let's talk about the man called Sting. <clears throat> That's the intro. That was an incredible intro. Best you've ever done. It's freaking amazing. I'm like uh, Talk is Jericho now with them. I might start working on these jingles more often. You're going to have to. You turn it in new day. Just start singing them. <laughs> <laughs> I 
So yeah, let's talk about Sting. I mean, I, I, you, all of you know by now how much of a Sting fan I was and how disappointed I was that we weren't going to get him at SummerSlam and, you know, the epic and destructive burial that Triple H gave him at WrestleMania and, you know, how disappointed I've been since that. And it's all just been like a downward spiral for me and uh, my passion for the icon Sting. And, uh, you know, I was getting ready uh, for the Q&A that I'm going to very soon with Sting, all ready to maybe ask a question if... I got the chance to say, you know, aren't you kind of pissed at what WWE have done to you? But no, I can now put that question on hold because apparently, you know, Sting could be in about a month's time the new WWE World Heavyweight Champion. He could be. I think it's like, it's a big ask to it's like see him ask. win it. And like, especially the way that Rollins seems to like get people on his side to help him with the win, especially after SummerSlam. But... If, I don't know. There's a chance. Do you think you'll Do you think you'll take it? Um, I don't know. I'd be very surprised if WWE gave him the belt. I think. I mean, I put up my simulation of the match between Rollins and Sting. I've read some of the comments, and I mean, there's some people that are just like, "Well, Sting cannot win the belt. Sting cannot win." I mean, it would just damage Rollins. Why would they let a 50 year old? I don't actually think he is 50. Is he? I don't think he is. Um, I'm not sure. It maybe is. Oh yeah, he is. I'm thinking of something. Probably else. around fifty. He's around that. But but you can't have a fifty year old anyway. Regardless, you can't have a fifty year old become your champion. I mean, hmm, that's not really that's not really the be all and end all age. I mean, if you saw him on Raw and you saw his movement in the ring, he moves better than the Undertaker. And I'm sure people maybe wouldn't begrudge Taker having another run with the belt. So you know, it's. I mean, that kind of uh, argument is flawed in my point of view, but. I would say that I I think it's a bit harsh on Rollins to make him drop the belt. I mean, considering how much he's just come on from SummerSlam. Like, SummerSlam for me was like Rollins stepping up and being shown as the credible heel that he can be and also getting the job done in the ring, which we haven't seen in a long time. So... All it needed was a pinfall finish, but, you know, we can't, we can't have everything in this world. But, you know, for me, Rollins is like there now. And um, I was very surprised that they went down this route with Sting because it almost makes me think to myself, WWE putting themselves in a real dodgy situation. I mean, if you let Sting lose and Sting gets pinned here, you're going to piss off people like me and all the Sting fans who feel that you've just been burying Sting from the offset. And I know I said in the past it wasn't a burial, but, uh, you know, over time I've got more and more depressed about the situation. So it's a burial now. (laughs) Um, uh, And then... (laughs) In regards to, to, to Rollins, if Rollins, lo- uh, if, if Rollins was to lose, then, you know, you'd have everybody complaining that you've just, you know, uh, you've just buried one of your new up-and-coming talent, the future, as, as it's said. So, WWE can't really win with this situation. So, uh, I don't know why they did this. I don't know why they put themselves in this predicament. It's exciting. But, um... No one's ever going to be satisfied with whatever the outcome is. And I'm surprised it's been announced already for Night of Champions. It, it has been announced really quickly, hasn't it? Mm. Like, I think um, I can see why people would see a Sting has no chance of winning and why it's a bad time for Ron's to actually drop it because he's really stepped up. And like the match at SummerSlam, like, he showed off some amazing moves and it was it finally felt like you know Ron's is there where he should be. Mm-hmm. So if, if he was to lose the title, I think it'd be a strange time to do it. But at the same time, I would argue, is it not better to have such like a legendary name take the title from him as opposed to someone else? Yeah, I would uh, 100% agree with that. And I think, do you know, the one thing that I've been thinking about is where could WWE potentially go if Sting becomes champion? So I was thinking about scenarios because people seem to be like just like on this massive downer. If Sting was to do it, then, you know, the whole world's going to break down because Seth Rollins has been crushed by the icon. It's, it's just not like that. There's so many scenarios that could come out of this. I mean, Rollins has already had a title reign, which is decent enough as it is. But you think that if you want to elevate a couple of other guys, I mean, we've talked on numerous occasions about someone like a Bray Wyatt, um, who who would I would love to see in the title picture at some point, and particularly now, which we'll talk about later, Bray Wyatt and his new found Wyatt family. I mean, what awesome way would it be to maybe, if Sting was to pick up the title, for him to ultimately have a feud with Bray Wyatt and the Wyatt family as it is? I mean, you could have so many awesome um, mind games going on between the icon and Bray. That's, that's, that's the deal. That's the stick for both of these guys. So 
for me, I, I think it opens up um, another path for the championship as opposed to this just being all about the authority. And if Sting was to win, I'm really hoping that the stipulation is, is that the authority has to be dispersed. Um, the only other way I can look at it as well, if Sting wasn't to win, that somebody costs him the match and I'd say possibly Triple H Maybe even the Wyatt family could pick a, you know, could pick him apart, opening the door again. But um, yeah, uh, interference seems likely to me, costing him the match, and maybe heading towards a Triple H match at something like Survivor Series. But I don't see it as a big deal, or a, or or a, or a, you know, just a chance to get upset if if Sting wasn't going to capture the gold. I'd probably be pissed off if Sting loses clean once again. I thought you would be. Like, yeah. I, I, I could probably say, like, a dirty finish regardless of the outcome. I think Triple H is someone that's bound to get involved because of the past, like, history with Sting at WrestleMania. I think it'd be interesting, though, if he was to, like, get involved in the match and go to take out Sting, but somehow cause Rollins to actually, like, hit Rollins with a chair or something like that, sledgehammer, and then that, that. gives Sting the victory. That, that would be amazing, and it kind of, like, sets up some dissension between them two, which we've been kind of thinking would probably come on for a while. The only thing is, if that happened and Sting was the champion... I can kind of see a match with Triple H down the line again, but I don't know then how Rollins fits in because he'd have to kind of fit in a rematch with Rollins as well. Well, when the minute you mentioned that, I was thinking, you know, that would be awesome. Maybe, you know, Triple H lining up. You know when they do that classic holding, you know, the opponent up and then yeah. gets, grabs a sledgehammer, goes to waffle in one, and he gets out the way and boom. Uh, you know, nails Rollins, he scorpion death drops, Triple H, get the fuck out of there, and then pins him and, you know, new champion. Uh, you know, it, it could be awesome. Sting could leave, and then they could go face to face. Triple H and Rollins feud started. Um, the you know the demise of the authority would be nice. Um, but I think if you do that, then like you say, possibly Triple H has got to have a match with Sting at some point. But whilst he's not, because he should be busy with Rollins, Sting can pick up a feud with somebody else. And like I say, for me, something like the Wyatt family would work. Um, I think that there's an opportunity with the Whites, and we'll talk about them a bit later, as I said, but a real opportunity now to get them to kick on and make Bray Wyatt the monster heel that he truly is. So I see a door, and it's opening. Make it happen. I think it'd be a good way to do it. I think if if that was the case, I would prefer that to like the stipulation that the authority would have to disband. Like if we had some kind of reason for Rollins and then Triple H to sort of go at each other, and it kind of disbands on its own. I, I would much prefer that because we've seen the stipulations in the past and they always come back anyway. So I'd rather do like a little bit more clean cut and just have them really break down and go after each other. And like you say, it does open up that opportunity then for Sting to feud with someone else. I don't know if I would have the full Wyatt family then though, especially now that they're sort of um, building the family up. So I think I think that's more a case of it's, it's going to stay with the shield. Um, maybe... Even the Dudley boys or something, you could bring in Spike and do like six man tags again. But I think in terms of Sting, I would prefer to see him go one on one match. Um, if the Undertaker stick and round, why not go Undertaker Sting? Well, that that's the other amazing route, wouldn't it? It would be the retirement match for them both for the title, and then the title. But that's a long way away. That's my only thing. I'm thinking it's quite a Wait. while to go, to go with Sting as champion, and I I, I find it surprising that they would go that long. And obviously Sheamus has the briefcase. Let's not forget that. So, um, But for me, if, if if they went towards a retirement match at WrestleMania and the belt then gets put up for grabs, that would be awesome afterwards, like a tournament. But uh, the trouble is, is, is Sheamus has the case. Well, that's the thing now you mention it. If something was to happen and Sting was to beat Rollins, then I wouldn't be surprised to see Triple H issue now Sheamus to then cash in on Sting. I'd probably cry if Seamus beat Sting after that. You'd be so happy for like a minute and then it'd be all over. You'd be so depressed. The trouble is, is I like Seamus, but I wouldn't want Seamus to like, st on the same night, if Sting wins. It, uh, do you know what? It would devalue the whole point of him getting a push. It would be crap. Don't do that to me. Don't do that to me, WWE. It would. I but can't like, handle that. <laughs> when you look at like everything they've done at WCW, it's not just kind of fit in though. Well, let's just quickly talk about this this stupid stuff that WWE have done because, um, right, the, 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 the original premises of Sting coming in was to topple the authority 
And if he does win the belt, and there is a feud between Triple H and Seth Rollins, he has done what he was supposed to do. And that would be great because we have gone like full circle and finally Sting has done the job he's meant to do, which was take out Triple H and the authority. He basically make it, makes it crumble from within. That's it. Mm-hmm. That's great. But the issue is, is the dumbest stuff that they've brought into this, which has obscured that vision, which is like, you know, it was about WCW originally uh, for, from, 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 from WWE's point of view. No one else's. I mean, even Sting acknowledged it wasn't about that. But... You know, they did that. And then now, and they and, and constantly referred to Sting as like, you know, the last remaining member of WCW, a company that don't exist anymore. Um, and kept taking shots and taking shots and taking shots at him. And yes, I know you've got to build it up as a heel, but it's getting a bit annoying. And then we obviously had him lose at WrestleMania. It just adds to it, though, when you have like <laughs> things like that, where you say he's the last member of WCW. It kind of just adds to that whole big match feeling, don't you think? But it wasn't about that. It wasn't about that. If it was about that and they'd started it about that, it's fine. But it wasn't. It was about him coming in to take out the authority. He even said it. So, you know, that... Yeah, I get it. It gets me annoyed. So it obviously does the job. I, I can tell you're annoyed by your voice. But, but you know, so they did all that. And then... And then, obviously, coming round to now with Sting and his epic return. I mean, we haven't mentioned how good his return was. And then if somebody says and makes a dicky comment about his face paint, well, let's, let's just think he probably had a mask on or something to get him into that position. So don't be a knob and complain the way he looked. Anyway, It did look a bit weird, didn't it? It looked like you'd been too hot in there and you'd been scratching his head. It did, but, I mean, uh, you know... I, you know, I had, like, a hood on and it's been, like, pulled back and that's what took it off. Yeah, and I think that's what, what did it. But, I mean, I mean, the, the actual way it was done with the whole thing going up and him just standing there in front of the crowd, it was probably the perfect crowd to do it in front of as well. It just, just was brilliant. Um, but, but then on SmackDown, we've got Seth Rollins coming out and saying, you know... Um, Sting's career has been, you know, nothing compared to Seth Rollins, which is a good heel tactic. And then he made an interesting reference because he said, you know, um, Sting's been in the minor leagues for like years now, uh, paving the way while he's been at the top of the pile as champion. Now, is that like a a, a dig, a reference to TNA? Like, you know, you were working for, you know, the nobodies down there because before, if you remember, Sting was in obscurity, did, did, don't exist you know, he didn't. So Wait, it's a step up, though, isn't it? He's gone from obscurity to the minor leagues. Yeah, I know. So, so at some point, he's got to make it to the major league. Yeah. Well, he's been at WrestleMania, so he must have made it by now. It just, I just, I mean, the the constant, the constant digs and the constant, you know, take knocking sting potentially makes me think that he could win now. And if you've seen the promotionals for for Night of Champions. It's Sting's face on the posters. So See, I haven't seen that. So, like, that's a good indication. I mean, it never, like, goes off who is on the poster because we've had, like, some, like, people like our truth and stuff on posters in the past. <laughs> and it's like, well, they're not even, like, in the main event. They're not even, like, a higher card match. So it, it doesn't really mean anything, but it is a good sign. It's good to see that they're actually using Sting and the fact that they are promoting him. It kind of makes it feel that like he does have a chance. I think he's got a chance. I just think that they will go with interference. Um, if they if they made him champion, he beat Seth Rollins clean. I think I'd just like shit myself. Wow, <laughs> it's gonna be emotional for you. I mean, I I can't see it happening. I can't. I can't see WWE. I can't see Vince McMahon sitting there going, "Let's make Sting WWE champion." I can't. can't really? Or Triple H going? Ugh. Triple H should feel a bit sorry for him at the moment. So. In real well, life, not, not, not. If Triple H was treated the way that he was after signing a deal, surely he'd be a bit packed off with the way he's been treated recently. But surely he's known that there's something like big coming from him. Otherwise, he wouldn't have signed it. So that's what kind of makes me think that you will win it. Especially like losing the match at Mania. Like that was a big thing. And it's like, well, Sting's never said anything. Sting's not too bothered about it. Surely he knows there's something bigger in his future. And like, if, if you can like say now in like six months time or so looking back, Sting, I don't care if he lost that WrestleMania match anymore because he won the title. Like, yeah. you're not going to be bothered about it? No, no. It, it, it would be the way to, to rectify wrong, in my point of view, uh, with WrestleMania. So, 
Yeah, he they, should have won that match, though. He should have won that match. They, they, they just uh, it was an it was a good booking in terms of spots, but I mean to to have him bit beaten with the sledgehammer, but then to shake his hand after was just like for me a no. And then have Triple H, Triple H coming out later on in the evening and like saying making sarcastic comments about Sting, uh, and then having the Rock overshadow it all was like even more of a no. So <laughs> you know. Um, I hope, I hope that I'll be cheering on Sting. Let's put it that way. And it's funny because I'm becoming more and more and more and more and more of a fan for Seth Rollins because I thought he did himself huge justice at SummerSlam, apart from John Stewart just being a dick and ruining my match. So, you know, what? Well, can I ask you a question? Because you're at SummerSlam. Go for it. You can't say no, can you? <laughs> no, um, no questions. No questions. Um, what was the reaction, right? You were obviously with other YouTubers as well, and like, um, uh, did you agree with with that that finish? Like, was you like, oh, that was that that was good. Like, John Stewart was the right man to come out and interfere in this match. It was good to do that. Was was the reception that, or was the reception like me and many Twitter people um, thinking? What the fuck is this guy doing? He has no place in this matchup. It's been so epic up until this point. It just deserved a clean finish. Well, kind of, but like being there in the moment, like was so into it. Like even like some of the like worst matches that no one was looking forward to, we really got into because like with the crowd participation, it just really adds to it. Mm-hmm. So like when John Stewart come out and he hit the ring, it was like we were all like jumping up out of seats to like see what was going to happen. And the crowd was, like, so anti Cena. It was, like, incredible. Like, it was so, so loud, like, throughout the whole show. Even before, it was just, like, constant, like, chants about, like, Cena sucks. So when he come out and he did hit Cena, all the way in the crowd would just really got behind it. It was, like, such an awesome moment. But then watching, like, it back and, like, afterwards, like, taking in what had happened, it was, like, that was an awesome match. I would have preferred a clean finish. But at the time, actually being there, it was such an incredible moment. It was just like, I think if you're watching it at home, it probably devalues it a little. Mm. Well, well, my point of view was the people that defended the finish, like saying, like, I imagine if I was there, I'd have just been hyped either way. But, but like, if <laughs> people that defend the finish say, well, well, John Stewart, you know, had his bit with Rollins, and so it made sense that he was there, and you know, we love it on the basis, obviously, that he it was it, it cost Cena. But I'd, I'd I'd flip it on its head, and I've said this in a commentary that I've done on my channel, if. If John Stewart hits the ring and nails Seth Rollins with the chair, right, and then it's Cena that gets the victory, the whole of the universe would just completely fold. And it would be, this is a disgrace, this is awful, how could you do this again? You've given John Cena his 16 time reign, yada, 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 yada. And so when I hear all that, when I think and I put that out there, it makes me think to myself, like the people that defend and say it was a good finish and it was better than having, you know, just a standard pinfall finish. Uh, I think it destroys that argument because because you wouldn't have been happy if it had been vice versa. John Stewart entering the ring, whoever he hits, it ain't a good finish. Yeah, well, that was the thing. Like it, watching it back, it was like it, it's a bad like end in the match, regardless of who he does attack. But at the same time, I, I was happy with it just for the fact that you know. Cena didn't win it. He didn't equal the record because I think it's something that should be kept for like WrestleMania. Even though like SummerSlam was such a huge event, it didn't really feel like the time to do it. No, and like the match wasn't even the main event. So I think when he does win it, it should be the match that closes the show and there's like a big celebration with that. So it been, I can't remember what about it was. It was probably like just after halfway through the show, maybe. Yeah, uh, it was. Yeah, it was. It was so like the timing kind of just felt a bit off anyway. And I just think it was a bad time to do it. I think when we got that book in, it was like, it, it's all being thrown together. It's all come around really quick. So I don't really want to see Cena do this. I, I probably would like to see him actually like level the record, maybe even beat it if like it's booked right and like the nice build to it. But this was just kind of thrown together and it was like, I wanted Seth to win anyway. So it didn't really matter if Jon Stewart come in and helped him do it. It was I was just glad to see Seth win. 
But didn't you think it discredited the match? Didn't you think like what, why why couldn't Wait. why couldn't Seth Rollins have won clean in that match? What what would what would that have really done for John Cena? It's not going to hurt John Cena to just let it be a clean victory, particularly when Rollins stepped up like a hundred and ten percent. It did, but at the same time, like while while it is, you mentioned this see, earlier. See, even your cat agrees. Your cat is angry at this finish, man. I, I wish she'd shut up. To be honest, <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't agree with this. But um, what I would say is, like... See? See? No, she's not having none of this. She's not having... She's not even letting us get a word in. Not having this. I I would say what you've just said is that Seth Rollins has, like, really stepped up. So regardless of the finish of the match, you've noticed that. You said that earlier in the show as well. So it doesn't really matter, like, how he won it. I think he's there now, and it's something that... I'm going to put it in the kitchen in a minute. It's something that you've realised... (laughs) <laughs> it's like it's like when anyone tries to defend John Cena, people, you get shouted down. Absolutely. She's about <laughs> to jump on us now. I'm going to put her in the kitchen. Give us two seconds. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, this is a very interesting stoppage to We Talk this week. It appears that my colleague and partner Smack Talks has been attacked by his cat for his defending of John Cena being, you know, screwed over by John Stewart at WrestleMania. WrestleMania, <laughs> SummerSlam. What's going on here? I, I, I was just cutting some random filling, and then I decided to call SummerSlam WrestleMania. So, <laughs> have you gone all Eva Marie? Have you gone Super Slam? Com- completely went out. I was, I was so fake. I was doing so well at filling, and then I decided to come out with WrestleMania. Terrible. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure. Weird. Barrett said the same thing in my interview. He said he wanted to come out dressed as Banana Man at WrestleMania and then had to backtrack to SummerSlam. It's one of those things, isn't it? It's one of those things. So, so have you got rid of your cat now? Because I, I feel sorry for her because she, she was obviously fighting the good fight here and defending the fact that Jon Stewart had no place in a wrestling ring. Uh, yeah, she's like a Cena fan. So, yeah, I've locked an Elimination Chamber pod. She can come out later. <laughs> I mean, just this... My, my my final say on the Cena scenario was was just I felt this match deserved something better as a finish. And the only other bit I'd add is where does John Cena go from here? I mean, if Sting's now coming into the title picture, Cena Cena's and what's going on with the US title? What's the point of giving up the US title if if you didn't, is that's not going to be on the line at Night of Champions? I don't think. Just one well, belt. That is like the odd thing, isn't it? Like Night of Champions, you would expect all the titles to be defended. And I wonder if that is something that they could kind of play on and say, you know, you're the United States champion now. It's time for you to defend that belt. So you've got like two matches on the night. He's going to do double duty. Oh, and yeah. And it, it kind of like makes you then think, you know, Sting has more of a chance as well because Seth's already wrestled that night. Wow. That is an interesting scenario, isn't it? So, so Cena's going to get a match with Rollins at Night of Champions as well. He could do, I suppose, because there's like unfinished business there anyway, isn't there? So like, I don't think they kind of mentioned it much on Raw in terms of like the two of them. It was more Cena and John Stewart. So I'm sure they'll still have like things to say to each other. And it would probably lead up to Cena getting his rematch for the United States Championship. As long as we don't have John Cena come down from the ceiling and take out Sting uh, <laughs> in at Night of Champions because he's got an, a reason not to let Sting win as well now, then absolutely fine. Well, I, I, I kind of see him doing that. Parachute I mean, into the arena. Well, that, that's more seeing a style, isn't it? You're like coming in a car and get launched out of it. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's 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 it opens quite a lot of scenarios, and that's what I think was good to get to get Sting involved. So, but I, I, I'm wondering what's going to happen with John right now. So, we'll see. I just hope that Rollins does lose the United States Championship pretty quick because I don't want it to be like. After all the time that we spent building it, building it up, I don't want it to now be like a secondary thing that's just around his waist while they're talking about the WWE Championship. There's been rumours of, of it being merged, that they're just going to do away with it now, which would be kind of stupid. It would really, because like, when you think about it, the titles in the WWE, that is like the second biggest title now by far. Um, the Intercontinentals just kind of fell away. Like it, it was supposed to be getting made more important, but... I've kind of lost interest in it altogether now. That's because it's got a white strap. It's because Ryback's got it. <laughs> yeah, and that. But it's also because it's got white strap. You need to change it to black. That I'm surprised horrible. they haven't changed that back, actually. They need to do something with that belt. It looks... I don't like it. Mm, I'm not a fan. 
I'm surprised it hasn't had redesign like most of the other things. I think they could. They should have redesigned it when they redesigned the um, the the world title. Because I look, I'm, I quite like the world title now. I've got really used to it. Yeah, I'm used to that as well. I think if they did redesign it as well, it kind of like makes it feel new and sort of more important. I would have, you know, after after WrestleMania, I would have kind of gone down the route of revamping all the belts to make them look better. If you think about just going off on a tangent, some of these belts look shit. Those tag belts, fucking hell. I hate them tag belts. I've always hated them. It's, it's just the bronze colour. Like, it, it doesn't scream champion. You want gold in there? Maybe if the Dudleys pick up the belts, we can get back to the retro titles. I would love to see them bring back the world tag team champions. That'd be nice. That'd be awesome belts. So, what do you think of the Dudleys then? Oh, we, we, we'll, we'll talk about the Dudleys now. Let's talk. About, uh, well, in terms of returns, it was pretty damn awesome. Loved it. Um, just because I think as well, I'm loving New Day like a lot at the moment. Like, uh, uh, you know, what's coming very close to challenging Rusev face at the moment? Big, what's that? Big E dancing. Oh, you kind of you kind of beat down on Big E's dancing. It's amazing. Yeah, and and the singing. It's a full package. Yeah, jiggly Big E. There's no doubt that New Day does rock now. Even like the crowd's been really behind them. I like, don't... When I was at SummerSlam, I was surprised because I was <laughs> expecting the New Day sucks. But it was New Day rocks all around the arena. I don't really know how Big E manages to move quite like he does for such a big guy. He's like, got the skills. He has. He's full of the skills. He's got the moves. I think it's hilarious. He's just... he's Every time, you know, they get that win and it's like their winning sequence now. We have to have that in WWE 2K16. Please. That's the animation you want. That is the one that I want. Um, I just... I, yeah, so, I mean, a New Day have, have just made themselves the best heels. Um, JR will probably not like it because they're not technically heels because they're being cheered. But... You know, I, I I love it. I love the way that New Day have come over. And um, the 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 thing is, it's weird because the Dudley boys. I mean, bringing them back now, like it was epic on Raw the way that they did it, and the fact that they you know kind of cleared house, put them through the tables, got in the face of the prime time players as well. Just just basically saying, you know, this uh, was our place and we're back. Um, so I I thought that was fantastic. All in all. Um, I, I'm interested to see if they actually are going to get a title reign. I think they will, but I don't think it'll be straight away. I'm surprised it was even a full... Uh, uh, I don't know if it's a full-time deal, but I know it's a deal that means they, they're they appearing more often. So I was I was surprised at this. Um, I think it's a good thing for the tag team division. Um, the only thing I'd say is it's kind of like... Do you remember before that the Dudleys wanted to feud with Rowan and Harper? Because they were using the 3D. Yeah. And now it's almost like, well, they why, why didn't they just do that then? <laughs> well, I think it's something we could still see. I think the Dudleys and the Wyatt should be like an amazing battle. Oh, yeah. And bring, like you said earlier, bring back Spike Dudley or something like that. Yeah. But like, even if they go like six man, because the Wyatts have now expanded anyway. So if, I don't know what Spike's doing at the moment. I don't know if he's signed with anyone. But it'd be cool to see him back as well. It would. It's like family versus family that way, isn't it? Well, that would be really, really good to see. Um, I, the only issue, obviously, I've got is, is outside of WWE is just Bully Ray's a bit of a knob. And TNA are not doing themselves any favours by continuing to talk about storylines where Bully Ray's involved. And I, the law. Yeah, I mean, I commented on, uh, I think it was on their Facebook page because <laughs> their Facebook page was posting these things like, who attacked Bully Ray revealed? And I was like, it was Vince McMahon. <laughs> was it not Vince McMahon? He, he came in there. He took down Bully Ray, dragged him back to the WWE. I'm sure Bully Ray was not like kicking and screaming. So Bully Ray was like, hey, hey, take me back, take me back. <laughs> it's uh, just him with a contract, hasn't he? It's him with a contract. Exactly, exactly. Um, yeah, so that's, that's my only minor gripe is I think that Bully Ray's been a bit of a dick in terms of all this process. He's negotiated himself a deal, fair play to him, but he shouldn't have, you know, minced around with TNA's business um, but but then again, you can't feel sorry for TNA at this point on, on, on that subject because they should know better by now. They've made way too many mistakes. It's irritating to keep hearing about their mistakes in terms of the backstage stuff. So, you know, if they're not going to learn, then unfortunately they're running out of time. I, I'm, I'm going to TNA in November. Uh, no, not November, January. Got loads of events coming up, so I'm getting kind of confused with them all. But, um, you know... 
Uh, I don't know what product I'm going to see at the moment. Ethan Carter's amazing, but everything else is just confusing. Well, I, I just think it's weird, like, the whole Bully Ray situation. Because he, he'd only just gone back there. He must have signed some kind of deal. He didn't. And then... He didn't. He didn't sign a deal. That's, that's the problem. They just took him back for a night. Well, who does that? It's like the Rick Rude... The, nobody ever does that. When Rick Rude, you know, jumped ship from one show to another, it was always like someone has to be tied down to a contract. And they did the thing with Hernandez and did the same thing. They trusted, like, word of mouth... It's just stupid. Stupid. It's just weird though, because like, if if it was one night and they've taped like so many shows, then they must have like had some kind of plan or something. It wasn't just attack them and then write them off with storylines altogether. They did. I, I don't get where it was going. And it's it's strange that Bully Ray's suddenly like gone from that position where he's had like probably a verbal contract then, as you say, and then gone into a contract with the WWE. It just seems a bit weird. You would expect TNA to have locked him down and at least had like some kind of um, no compete clause for like at least 30 days or something. I don't know if it's even been that since he left TNA. Do you want me to nail it with Bully Ray? Go and nail it. <laughs> right. This is my thought process on Bully Ray, right? This is a guy, yeah, that in WWE was always kept at a tag team level. There was no there was no way Vince McMahon would push him because Vince McMahon knew and, and I think we all know Bully Ray's got a bit of an attitude. Yeah, he, he you know, he he can come across as a bit of a, a you know what. And um, you know, Vince McMahon always knew that. So Vince McMahon kept him leveled at the tag team, right? Then when obviously he wanted more, um he wasn't gonna get it. So he got his opportunity at TNA. And TNA, you know, he came in as a tag team, they pushed him a bit and then he became a singles competitor. Something that WWE would never ever do. And TNA gave him probably his, I'm not saying he's his best run when you compare it to like his tag team, but he got an opportunity that he was never, ever going to get with a WWE. They pushed him to the top, to the mountain, you know, put him in major storylines like the Aces and Eights, um, you know, made him a world champion, even put him in their Hall of Fame with Devon as, as the Dudleys. I mean, you know, they gave him all of this and this guy repays the company with these things. Number one, Bound for Glory, flaunted Bullet Club shirts um, on their show in Japan, um, basically saying when my contract was up, I want to leave and I want to go and wrestle uh, for New Japan Pro Wrestling um, with the Bullet Club. That was disrespectful. That's out of order. Why would you do such a thing? Uh, Particularly, no respect there at all. After he did that, he then decided um, all of a sudden that New Japan wasn't going to really take him on. So then he decided to start flaunting about WWE. And he started tweeting random things about how the, the morale at TNA is not very good. Yeah, 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 jumping on the bandwagon. Um, so again, disrespectful. Um, funnily enough, WWE opened the door to him to, to go to uh, the Royal Rumble and participate. And he rocked up at that show. And then um, I think in his mind, he thought he was going to get a deal there and then. Um, obviously not. As I said before, Vince McMahon is not going to push him as a singles competitor. If Vince does this now, I look like a dick. But um, <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's going to happen. It's um, not going to happen. Yeah. So so Vince McMahon reeled him in one more time, and then they didn't want him because possibly Devon wasn't ready for the uh, the the tag team run that they might have now. Anyway, moving back to it, Bully Ray's got nowhere to go, so he tucks his tail between his legs, goes back to TNA and gets this, uh, well, he came back as a special guest referee only to then duck out quickly again, but then gets given the opportunity to become the law and decides to be involved in another major storyline from a TNA point of view, hits the ring, cuts a promo on how the talent deserve respect and the company doesn't give people respect, sits in the ring or stands in the ring and then decides to get all the talent standing up on the ring apron and continues to bash about respect, respect, respect. And then he's like, decided to just quit the company and yes as i said you know it it wasn't a a very good business sense from tna but at the slightest opportunity i gather there was a hint that wwe would might want him again he decided to you know jump ship straight away not giving a shit about what tna had planned for him he just could quite frankly couldn't care and he's done it again he screwed over tna and tna are now left with shitloads of footage that they can't use one more time 
bad, bad move from TNA, but my view on Bully Ray, if you look at what he's done throughout this period of time and what TNA have done for him, do we not find that's a bit disrespectful and out of order? And, you know, that I think I've given you the timeline that proves it. Yeah, I totally agree. It gives a whole new meaning to TNA one night only when it comes to Bully Ray. Yeah. He's there just the one night. But do you think they won't use that footage now? I think they're I think they're having to. I think they're wrapping it up. So um from what I've seen, they've played out the storyline. So they you know, they've said that he was the um the law and the law was taken out, and then I think they've thrown Jeff Jarrett into the mix. I think they're playing that it was a GFW um scenario. So I think maybe Jarrett took him down someone took him down i haven't watched enough tna um over the last few weeks to really catch up with it but um they're trying to to fix it but it's so embarrassing you you're seeing them saying that someone took him out and he's on wwe tv this is what i mean this is a guy that's put in a hall of fame i mean you were put in someone's hall of fame and you don't have any respect for him well it is from that like perspective like i totally agree with this selfish but- at the same time, is it not like, do you not think it'd be really cool for like younger wrestling fans where you see like someone going from TNA to WWE? Because it's not something they'll say anymore. I mean, it's it's not the kind of situation you would normally have where someone gets taken out and they'll be on the next show. Uh, d- did Sting do it this way? Sting kind of bowed out gracefully and then, you know, took some time, then made his appearance in WWE. He didn't, he didn't make, he, he made sure he wasn't going to ruin or damage TNA in any form whatsoever. That guy didn't care. That's my view. Do you not think that was Vince's decision, though, at the same time? Because, like, when Joe signed with them, like, it, it seemed as though Joe was ready to go to it and they kind of held off signing them for quite a while just to give it some time in between it. So it's weird that they've gone the opposite way with Bob Ray and, well, Devon as well, the Dudleys, and they've gone straight into that contract from TNA. Well, they probably know that he wouldn't care anyway. There's no way he put up a fight to, to, to be respectful to TNA. That's just it, it, that's not the way he operates. He's always been outspoken. In ECW days, he was like that as well. But what do you think about, like we mentioned before, about the minor leagues comment and kind of downplaying TNA. But I, w- I was surprised to see that JBL mentioned them as like 24-time world tag team champions, which included the TNA reigns. It's interesting, isn't it? It's interesting that WWE have started, you know, potentially acknowledging a few bits of TNA here and there. It's, it's a bit, it's a bit shady how they, you know, only realize some things, but, um, I, I think it's good to acknowledge the reigns, but I think it only just boosts, um, just how big a tag team the Dudleys are. And I mean, that's my thing. I, I, I've, I've obviously bashed Bully Ray quite a lot. Um, no, no, you know, no questions at all in terms of, he was an amazing tag team superstar and he's awesome on the mic. He always, you know, sends out verbals. He's, he's, he's in a way he's a good, he was a good singles competitor for TNA because he always talked a good game. Um, and he's got an amazing shape as well. So I respect him in all those elements, but I just feel that he, he shortchanged TNA big time. Um, and yeah, it is a huge deal that they are, um, back in the WWE and it is awesome because that seeing a 3d again was brilliant. Um, so, so you know, I I I love it, but there's that little element of meh. Do you think this could be the start though of like more people coming in from TNA, like the likes of the Hardys return? Uh, Kurt Angle. I don't. Uh, I think Angle might go back. I'm not sure about Jeff. Um, I think I think Matt Hardy's very comfortable with TNA. I think he really respects the company. I think that's. I mean, he's, you know, he seem, he's, he's a proper, he seems like he's a proper pro TNA guy. Um, and I think Jeff, Jeff casually likes what he's got there. I don't, I don't know whether he'd want to go on the road again and do what he would have to do. So I'd like to I see the Hardys go back. It's a travel like situation, like doing so many shows. I think that would put them off. Like a lot of the guys, like the older guys seem to be relaxed in TNA because they don't have to put up with that schedule. Yeah. But at the same time, I think. The way they've built up the tag team division with all these different teams now, bringing in the Dudleys is a huge thing. And if you had the Hardys in there as well, like I think that just like adds so much to it, even if they're not the same kind of Hardys that we used to see. But just the fact they've got that name in there and that recognisability, I think is a huge thing. But if you do all this, aren't you burying the young talent again? You are, but look at like what they've done with the Wolves. Like in the series that I had with them, that put the wolves over, and I would say the same thing in the WWE. I'm only I'm only saying that because that's what people say. 
I don't think that. I just thought I'd say it. Well, I don't know. You proved you were a bit of a mark this week. What? No one can say anything about Sting. You can. You can say stuff about Sting. But if you're going to sit there and tell me that he, he doesn't deserve like a win at some point, then you're just freaking delusional. I, d- I didn't say that. Not like you. Seth, not Seth, you. Seth, but in general. In general. Seth, Seth Rollins mentioned the minor leagues. And before coming on here, he just went off on one. Yeah. Because it's like, it's a dig. It's another dig. Stop digging him. And then as soon as you mentioned, like, the face paint before, it was like, before anyone comments about the face paint, like, don't have a go at his face paint. <laughs> Maybe, but and is it? Have, have you not, out of all the guys, like, that have come into the industry, uh, don't you think he's probably one of the most, um, you know, reserved and respected? You never hear him criticise other other companies. You never hear him slag anybody off. He's not, like, like I mean, uh, uh, Hogan talks a lot, you know. So out of all the legends... He's one of the guys that just kind of goes about... It. Kurt Angle talks a lot. He goes about his business and he just does it. And I think that that's why he deserves a, a massive amount of respect. And all the things he's done in his history, you know, back in the days with his feuds with Flair. That's why I respect him. And that's why I like, you know, that's why I talk him up. Yeah, absolutely. He's probably like one of the most respectful guys that's actually in wrestling. He's just such a nice guy. And you can tell that he like really cares about the promotions that he wrestles for. Like TNA. WCW, WWE now. So I, I think it's really cool just the way that he does act when you get someone like Bully Ray, who's the complete opposite. But I'm going to say, in terms of Night of Champions, I think he'll definitely win it. Because after what you said today, I think you've got his back. I think you're going to make sure he wins it. I'm going to do John Stewart, mate. I'm, I'm going to somehow get to Night of Champions. And uh, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm, I'm going to have a super kick party at Seth Rollins' expense. Just make sure, make sure Rollins thinks that you're on his side. How would I do that? Well, you can be all pro Rollins going forward. I could, couldn't I? I could. Or, or I could just like... You, you know, said you're warming to him. I, I love Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins is awesome. Uh, the, the, whole, the whole thing when he came out at SummerSlam, all dressed in white, it was like, it was brilliant. Everything that was that was awesome. great change. I really didn't expect that. Like even just like a simple change to white, I thought it looked really cool. If you listen to we talk back today, you'll see that I am fighting the good fight at all angles. I thought Seth Rollins' corner for a clean victory here. That was only because Cena was in the other corner. No, it's not. It's not. That match deserved whoever won. Even if John Cena had won that match, John Cena should have beat someone clean in that match. That match deserved a pinfall finish, not dickhead coming in and jabbing someone <laughs> with a chair i'm not i'm not gonna mince my words it was bullshit finish such a mark it was a bullshit finish it was rubbish yeah I, th- I thought it was awesome like just being there but i don't know watching it back it might be a different story when you get in the ring and you got the chair and you're like looking at people and i'm like i just keep looking at cena to give away that i'm gonna hit cena you obviously you know watching it on tv it just was like when i was sitting there i was like he's gonna hit cena he's gonna hit cena oh He's hit Cena because he did the worst acting I've ever seen. So what would you do if John Stewart got in the ring at Night of Champions and took out Seth? Oh, that that is a question. <laughs> <laughs> what is the answer? W- would you be uh, like devastated at the finish being screwy? Like you, even if crap. Triple H comes in and it's like he takes out Rollins by mistake and it's a screwy finish, it's not clean. You just hit me with the kryptonite, man. Uh-huh. Oh, I got Jesus. What I oh. Would you want to see Sting's no. reign forever like determined on screwy finish? Can I get away if it's not gonna happen? <laughs> I, I think you'd be devastated if it didn't. If oh, no, there's no place for Jon Stewart. It doesn't matter. I'm not I'm gonna say it again. There's no place for him. No, no place for him. If he came in and did that, it's a bad finish. Is as he not sticking was... around though? Because like he was oh, on Raw as well. No, I hope not. Please. Do, uh, all right, all right. Let's just let's just let's just sort this conversation out, right? Is there a place for celebrities in matches if they're not physically able to complete? Like Stephen and Mel put on a good show. I've, I've maybe expected a little bit more from him. I kind of thought he'd be like gimmicked up a bit more, to be honest. Not just like shorts. Uh, but I was kind of thought like that. That to me worked. That was good. Stephen and Mel. Put on point, uh, but, but uh, John Stewart coming out. Uh, yeah, he might be a wrestling fan, but I'm a wrestling fan. But I don't warrant to get in the ring, you know. It's just unless Sting's there. Of course, then I deserve to get in the ring. But 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 
celebrities. Uh, how many more of these rubbish celebrity storylines do we have? It's just it's just a cheap selling point. It's still, you know, it's like it gets us a bit of publicity. I don't like that stuff. It is. Like, I can totally see where you come from and totally agree as well. Like, the majority of the celebrity stuff I always hate because you know it's going to be, like, terrible. But at the same time, I like, can understand. Like John <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. But I, I can understand why they do that. Like, because they obviously have to sell the pay per view. And the more eyes that they get by getting in these celebrities is big business for them. But at the same time, as a wrestling fan, it's just something that you don't really want to see. And as good as, like, Stephen Amell was, like, I, I kind of felt the same. I did, like, expect to see a little more from him. But even, like, the whole crowd that I was with, they didn't really get into that match because of it. So I don't know if it was just a case of people were kind of shitting on the match because he wasn't a wrestler and they weren't really interested for that reason. But in terms of the celebrities that have come in, I thought that was probably the best that we've seen for probably as long as I can remember. I kind of remember someone else that's got involved in a match and been willing to do as much. Well, quite a lot of people don't. Like, I mean, it's like a mixed thing, isn't it? A lot of, some people haven't watched Arrow and some have. So if you haven't seen it, you ain't going to really be into it. So that's that's the problem. Whereas I think with Jon Stewart, a lot of people have heard of Jon Stewart, but that doesn't that doesn't mean that I've gone out and bought or wanted to watch a pay-per-view on the basis that Jon Stewart's going to be there. I definitely hadn't gone out and, you know, bought, bought or paid or whatever, gone to a show to think to myself, uh, you know, John Stewart is the host of the show. It, uh, it was irrelevant. He, if he was, I, w- I would have still watched SummerSlam regardless. I, I didn't want him there. Um, there was one comment that I had that was said that um, he had to be used because he was the host of the show. But that's rubbish because if if that's the case, then you know, you're you, you justify maybe Hulk Hogan rocking up in the main event and doing something at WrestleMania. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. I just can't say, see it next WrestleMania. I don't know. Oh, that could be really controversial. Imagine that if he screwed like. I won't go into that one. Um, <laughs> I just I don't know. I don't know. It's for me. I just feel that I don't want to see celebrities involved in the ring unless they're like a Stephen Amell who can physically compete, not just looking like a Wally. Ronda Rousey's an interesting one. I'll give it that, but. Well, she is someone that can compete, yeah. like when a time comes. But I'll switch your question around a bit. Oh, is no. there a place for celebrities as a host in wrestling? Uh, well, did you enjoy having celebrity hosts on Raw each week? I never enjoyed it. I thought it was always <laughs> awkward. <laughs> so, like, I would prefer them in the match if they're like willing to get involved. But in terms of like, um, just like the odd segment backstage or like the host and thing, I really can't stand it. So, so like with with like for example, John Stewart came out on Raw, and then cut this promo about that Ric Flair. The reason why he did it was because of Ric Flair, and he didn't want to see the the sixteen times go um, from from Flair. And then they WWE booked Flair to come out and say, "But you shouldn't have done that because you should have you should have um, known that I wanted John Cena to win this match." <laughs> <laughs> um, and then and then had Ric Flair put over Cena because he needs it. Um, and then it was almost like no one really cared for John Stewart. Even the AA, not fast. Well, the thing is, though, <laughs> now he's got that endorsement from Ric Flair to say you want something to beat it. Like, it, it's inevitable he is. He, but he I, will, I think yeah. could be sooner than we think. Um, I don't know. I don't think he should beat it. But then again, I don't really think that he should have had so many title reigns. But that's a different do you, conversation. Do you not think, in terms of what Cena's done, though, he deserves to do it, and not just in terms of his wrestling, mm. but the commitment that he puts into everything no, outside the ring, make a wish. I think he should have had longer reigns, better reigns. It doesn't necessarily mean just because you're like a, a 16 time champion that you were better than um, another champion. It's like Bret Hart. Bret Hart didn't have to have like 100 reigns, but everybody respects and knows what Bret Hart's done for the business. Best there is, best there was, best there ever will be. Shawn Michaels hasn't had um, all those title reigns. But you still say, in my point of view, that Shawn Michaels is the greatest of all time. I I see where you come from, but I think the first thing people look for, especially like new fans to wrestling, is going to be the amount of (laughs) (laughs) titles that someone's won. So I'm enjoying these conversations. Look look at the Dudleys as well. Like that's that was all about the title reign. What JBL mentioned, it really puts them over. It's like that dominant team in the whole industry when you say like 24 time world tag team champions 
How many times was Medusa women's champion? Do we know that? Once. And then what are you going to know now? You're going to know that Nikki Bella is the longest reigning women's champion soon. Yeah. So, so then she would be remembered as the longest reigning. The reigns, for me, are, are, are more important in terms of just having a good long reign. I know she hasn't had a good long reign, but I'm just saying, reigns sometimes can equal out um, as such compared to just having lots and lots of time. To be honest, lots of, t- lots of title reigns just means that you lost a lot of times. It does, but if you, if you put it in perspective the amount of time that they've been there... Yeah, I, 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 look, I'm not begrudging Cena overtaking Flair. I'd, I'd rather, because I think Flair is that history thing, and, you know, we go back, and I still think Cena probably needed a few more more amazing feuds. The, I mean, over the last few years, Cena's been awesome. I'm not I'm not going to knock that at all. It's, this whole United States stuff's been amazing. Um, but... I just sort of, I just sort of think that is a lot of a lot of play up of of how many times you win the belt, and there's 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 other champions out there that have not held it as many times, and as I say, Shawn Michaels is the best example, greatest of all time, but won't be remembered as like you know the the biggest champion of all time because because he didn't have that many reigns. Yeah, totally. I think we should get the We Talkers involved in this. What's better, like the amount of titles that you've had or the length of the reign, and should Cena beat Ric Flair's record? I flip your question as well, and I flip the We Talk as a question as well. Is John Cena the greatest of all time? And if you're going to say greatest of all time, what do you mean? Because I get told that all the time that John Cena is the greatest of all time. I see it tweeted all the time, but I don't agree. You know why I don't agree? Why? Because he's not the greatest wrestler of all time. Well, I see people are tweeting about this guy being the greatest wrestler of all time, and then the next week it's someone else. The next match, it's someone else. It changes all the time. You know who I, I, I'm, I'm saying? Shawn Michaels is the greatest of all time in terms of wrestling. Um, Bret Hart's very close second. I would say Michaels is probably my greatest of all time. I agree. I, 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 think, I think that you can... Uh, the, biggest, the biggest seller or something like that. I don't know what the word is. Um, I don't know what the word is to sum up Cena. But, I mean... Uh, he, he's like a franchise and I'd say that you know you say like Sting's like like the, the franchise but really John Cena is probably the biggest franchise WWE has had and it's like a total package you know all the Make-A-Wish stuff all the merch that he sells the the, the way that they've, they've managed to manufacture him over the years as well um, yeah and, and also I'd say in terms of service as well to the WWE I mean you can never fault that he's always been there and he's never ever decided like you know even if he's done a movie or two he's never sacrificed his WWE career to do a movie or something like that so so I'd say in that term he probably could be classed as one of the greats but well, you, can, you can't say that he's the greatest in terms of wrestling it's just false he's not I- the greatest wrestler I think it's hard to like nail it down to say like the greatest of all time because it all depends on what you're defining them being the greatest at. Like we've said Michaels, but we also said in terms of like the best wrestler. Performer. 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 Well, you've got um, like other people though that you would consider like the greatest in like other areas. I mean, The Rock amazing on the mic. Yes. Like Stone Cold Steve Austin and the greatest. Mm -hmm. But it all depends on what you're kind of judging them on. Depends what style you like as well. I like Shawn Michaels because I thought he could do everything. He'd hype and he was always a guy that could carry the matches. I mean, there's no one for me that could ever put on the matches that he did with The Undertaker apart from Shawn Michaels. And I think that anytime you see a match, like the Triple H ones were good, but they were never going to eclipse um, the Shawn Michaels ones. And that's I think everyone always goes back to that. Possibly that's when Taker should have hung up his boots because those matches were so good. It's so difficult to beat them. And I think like that's what Sean did. It's rarely a time where you thought Sean's had a bad match or Sean's not performed like Sean should perform. And that's the way I always think. If you like someone that raises hell and stuff, you're going to be going with an Austin, aren't you? Because he's a brawler. Uh, yeah. If you want, if you want entertainment factor, it could be The Rock. So um, for Cena, it's hard graft. I think if you're going to look at something for Cena and you know the other stuff. Well, that's the thing. No one's ever going to have like the same like opinion. Like they're always going to have different reasons for choosing different people. And I think that's probably the best thing. That's that's mm. one of the good things about being a wrestling fan. You can always have like a good conversation about that. It is. It is. Everybody's got an opinion, and everyone's open to one. And uh, 
you know, I, I, I think I said a, a little bit earlier, you can't say that John Cena is the best wrestler, but maybe in your opinion he is, and that's absolutely fine. M- my opinion is that he, he, he's big and he's, he's, he's a great in some aspects, but I don't, if you're going to say wrestler, I'd say compare him to Shawn Michaels or Bret Hart or someone like that, and it's kind of clear that he, he hasn't got the technical skills to do that. Yeah, totally. Springboard stunner. Well, that's all you need to see. <laughs> yeah, so there you go. Um, so, oh, wow, we really went off on one there. Talking about the greats, that's like a whole we talk in itself. It is. We're good for that. We're full sure with that. And never get like a definitive answer. No, no. Um, let's, let's quickly touch on a few other things. Um, Lesnar, uh, where does it go with Taker now? Um, or is he feuding with Bo Dallas? I, I think that might have just been a one off. Like, I think he he must have had a death wish to actually come out in that situation. I was really surprised when I seen it. I wondered how they would handle it. But I thought it'd be more like Triple H or someone come out and say that you'd maybe make a match or something further down the line and not tonight. But then Bo Dallas come out and was just like, uh oh. I was still waiting. I was I was waiting for uh, them to come out and suspend him again to get him off TV, to be honest with you. Yeah, I kind of thought something like that might happen. Just like write him off for a bit and then it kind of takes you around to WrestleMania where they can have that rematch. But it just, it just again, elevates how truly awesome it is when Lesnar is around because I don't think anyone at the moment generates as much buzz as Brock Lesnar. And he, he really, I think he's really come into his own in that, that you know that they said that he would always be like a, um, a showcase, you know, that he'd, he's like a, a star attraction. He really has become that. I heard that he's going to be, um, you know, wrestling at, is it Madison Square Garden at some point? I haven't heard that yet. They're, they're, they're doing something like that now. So uh, it's like, you know, when he did the Beast in the East, that's another selling point for them. And I, 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 before I was a bit negative, like when he was champ, because it was like he weren't there each week. But now this just makes, for me, it's great. Every time Lesnar comes back, I'm hyped. It's just, it's just the intensity that him and Heyman bring to the product is just awesome it, it's amazing just whenever like you give a mic to Heyman like he, he just gets it over so well like this week as well and just like getting over like how frustrated he was Brock didn't have to say a thing it was just all down to Heyman and he sold it so well it, it was it's it's the thing is though now is is you're waiting aren't you it's a waiting game to understand what's going to happen because like I don't see the Undertaker coming back relatively quickly well, it, it's kind of played up as though, like, this is going to happen, like, quite soon. It's going to go over but, Night of Champions, isn't it? So jump that pay-per-view, I'd say. I, I would guess it would. But at the same time, like, SummerSlam was, like, the biggest pay-per-view. So, like, Survivor Series is probably the next biggest. Maybe wait till then. But even then, I would have said that that was more of a match that we should be getting, like, around the Royal Rumble or WrestleMania. There's so many factors. Because, obviously, if Sting picks up the belt, it could open the door for that, that match that we're waiting for. If that doesn't happen, then we might be seeing Lesnar take her at WrestleMania. So, um, it's kind of, where's it going to go? I would say that just one quick point is if we never do get Undertaker versus Sting ever, I really wouldn't understand that because it's been, it's been, it's been there. You know, it's, 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 it's something that even in the games they've edited into commentary. I heard it the other day where they said that this is the dream match. If they never did it, I'd be shocked. I think they're just waiting. I think that will be the retirement match. But it's just what can they fit in kind of before that? What did you actually make of the finish to Lesnar and Taker? I thought it was better than Jon Stewart. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I didn't mind it because I did a bit of research into the whole tapping out thing. And um, there's like a UFC, and I don't, I don't watch a lot of UFC, but there's a UFC term of false tapping. Um, which is where the opponent knows that the referee's on the wrong side of him. So he uses, he taps to make out, you know, I'm giving up. And it, it makes the, it makes the, you know, it makes the other, the opponent release the hold. And I think that's maybe the angle they were trying to play off was, you know, take a tap because he wanted, he knew he couldn't get out of it. So he, he played a, a, a tricky card and then obviously low blow and continued the match because he knew the referee hadn't seen it. And he knows that it's the referee's call that's final. So I liked it in that, that aspect. Um, and I, I, I don't think it did either man any damage, really. Um, I, that, that, you know, that finger at the end was, was, was just so on point. 
<laughs> that that was incredible. Like the moment where they both sat up laughing at each other as well. It it was so much better than the WrestleMania uh, match that we saw. It was it 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 was good, and I still think we're still getting towards the fully fully developed Undertaker. It's a new dimension to the Undertaker, to be honest, because it's kind of trying to go back to how, when he was a heel as well, but it's not quite fully there yet. Because I think Taker's coming across as the heel in all of this. He is definitely like that was something that was on Raw as well. Like it was in Lesnar's hometown, so he was getting booed anyway. But I, I kind of feel like the whole build up to this, it's been like the Undertaker taking the part of the heel. And when whenever Undertaker's there, you just want to cheer him because he's the Undertaker. But at the same time, everyone's so behind Brock Lesnar, you really want to cheer him. So it's good to see Undertaker doing that. I don't know if it really works though. It doesn't really get more of as much of a heel. No one's ever going to boo him. But at the same time, I do think it makes him look a little weak. It does, but he's he I still think he looks weak. I I'm waiting I'd say WrestleMania, he will look more like the dead man that we'd expect. I think he I think it, have you not noticed all the images that they use of the Undertaker, they're using from about like a couple of years ago, around about when he was facing I think Shawn Michaels with the long hair. Mm-hmm. Or any any that why are they not taking new 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 renders of him? Because they don't want him to look like he does at the moment. I they're trying I think they're trying to get through it to get to him having long hair and being more old school. Well, it could just give him extensions like Hogan used to wear in TNA. Oh, no, you can't do that. You look shit. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't. I, I, they, are, they, are, they are. That's what I think they're doing. They're angling towards And we'll have like a fully fledged, proper Undertaker at that point. There was a lot of stuff made about him dropping to, to, what, to his knees, crawling out. I think he's just selling. Yeah, because he did actually. I remember watching that. He like crawled backstage. I think it's a sell. They're still I, selling I, I, I that he's weak. So. They're still selling he's weak. Under, no. Undertaker is the master at selling. If, if we've ever watched him play this this broken gimmick, it's amazing. One thing I would say, like, I I don't know for definite, but when the timekeeper rang the bell, mm. like being there, we we were all completely confused as to what was happening. We thought like. When when the eventual end come, we thought like the timekeeper had got it wrong and he was supposed to ring the bell then, but he thought that was the ending. So was the timekeeper actually in a position to see the Undertaker tap? No, that's the thing that made it stupid. Because I, I, he can't, I can't see, he can't see it. He can't see it. He's, that's what made it rubbish. But 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 we, but we I ignored that bit at the time. So. <laughs> so yeah, it was like well, who told him to ring the bell? It, it was so weird, and like the whole crowd was just like completely in shock as to what happened like nobody knew it was more confusion than anything else i thought we were getting a screw over angle with somebody ringing the bell but we didn't yeah but well that was what kind of went around because they didn't show the replays until like right until after the match when it all like sort of been sorted out and um like you just heard people saying someone screwed him over so we're like trying to look around ringside to see who was there and it, it was just a really confusing moment being there live um, but then when they did get the replays, like they had some really good angles of it so you could see what did happen. But I, I just thought it was really confusing the fact that the timekeeper rang the bell when like the referee didn't see it. I was I was just waiting for uh, them to say the match must continue, but they never did. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what we kind of thought. We're, like, we're waiting for some kind of announcement saying that like that wasn't like a submission or whatever and the match must go on. But... In, until it ended and we're seeing like the replays, it was just a state of confusion. I think if we are leading towards a match at Survivor Series between the two, I think that's when Kane will come back and possibly tombstone one of them. I don't know which one he'll tombstone, to be honest with you. it's You know what WWE are like? They like to swerve us. So I, Kane will come back at some point and I think it will be to 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 squander one of their, their victories. I think now, now you say that I could probably see them doing that. I don't know if I could see like much like in terms of Brock Lesnar versus Kane. If you like took out Lesnar, I think he'd tombstone the Undertaker just just to to have that angle, that surprise shock angle. Well, if he did, it could like kind of put Undertaker out and then till WrestleMania. Yeah, I, the trouble is then you you kind of angle in when, when's he going to take on his brother again. They had they had some awesome feuds back in the day, but I don't I don't I mean I remember when I think was it Taker was the champ uh, on SmackDown or was it yeah. Kane was the champ that that feud was really good I loved all that I thought it was, was that when Kane like first come back like, I th- yeah I think maybe Heyman was writing around that time 
It was when they had. It was when he got because he got got rid of Paul uh, Paul Bearer as well. Was that when he buried him in cement? Yeah, it was loads of crazy shit going on around then. But it was like I kind of enjoyed that. It was when first, I think it was when Kane was in his. You know, he was uh, he was he was unmasked as well at that time, and he kept laughing all yeah. the time. And they were hinting that it was going to be taken with the feud. But um, I really enjoyed that that period of time. But I don't think we can re, re recapture that. So yeah, seeing that though, I think like in terms of the match itself. I think a match between them would be a much more WrestleMania Undertaker style match than what we've seen with Brock Lesnar, where it's just a brawl. Yeah, but but I it doesn't it doesn't appeal at WrestleMania, Kane, unless they go proper old school. The pair of them go back. It doesn't really appeal to me. I'd rather see it, Sting it Taker. Could, it could be like a retirement match where Kane retires his brother. Oh no! Really? We can't no have Sting that. Match. We can't have that. We can't have we can't have Kane, whose gimmick's fallen from from grace for such a period of time, then retiring his brother. If Kane well, was, what if he took him on in like old school Kane outfit? Uh, maybe if Kane was as good as what he was when he first came in and had never been given all these dumb gimmicks, then yeah, it works. But he's not. He's not. He's a good servant to WWE, but he's they would never gave him the the respect that he probably should have had, like the Undertaker. He could have yeah. been he could have been just a bigger a bigger deal, but um with, with the way that Kane was originally brought in. But um they they he didn't want to wear that mask. <laughs> <laughs> so you know. But um it, as you can see, so many scenarios that have come out of all of this. You can you can fantasy book uh, until until you're blue in the face. Absolutely. It, it's that, like I said before, it, it's great being a wrestling fan because not only like arguing over the greatest like wrestler of all time, you've got all these arguments and like predictions about what could happen. There's so many possibilities, and that's the funnest thing about it. Exactly. Exactly. And I think we've got one last topic to quickly touch on. Um, something that you're kind of surprised at, and we have talked about them a bit anyway. Um, the Wyatt family got a new member. It's like as if. By magic, they finally decided to listen and uh, start recruiting again. It took a long bloody time, hasn't it? Yeah. Um, one thing I've picked up on here, obviously, the, the new guy is called Braun Strowman. Um, I haven't really heard a lot about this guy until we obviously appeared. I think someone said that he was like one of the uh, one of Adam Rose's. Uh, what do you call it? Rosebuds. Um, I don't. I don't know. I never <laughs> really noticed. I think I'd notice him. He's pretty big. Um, he's huge but um, his debut was very good the way he took out Reigns Reigns did did do well Reigns made him look powerful and it, it was it was great selling for Roman Reigns um, Ambrose as well um, it's got to happen though that the Wyatts have to win this feud now you can't can't do this to me and, and let Roman Reigns prevail it's uh, if you're going to push the Wyatts Now's your time, and now is the time to capitalize on what you've done over the last month or so to to make him look good. He's still saying he's the new face of fear, but he lost to the Undertaker. So, well, he lost to everyone, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, um, I, I think it's the time. Um, one thing I am worried about is when they do have another match, because obviously it's like three against two. Please tell me they're not going to bring Rowan back to be with. Reigns and Ambrose. Oh, that would be awful if they did that. I can't see that happening because, like, the Whites did get back together before he got injured. But he so didn't, though, did he? He didn't. He did. Like, you, you teamed him with Harper before, he, like, they yeah. were joined with them. Bray. He teamed with Harper, but he never interacted with Bray again, did he? And uh, if you if you think about it, right? As I was thinking about this, think about this. Luke Harper and Bray have never had issues. Uh, but Eric Rowan did, so so you could WWE could spin the angle that Eric Rowan has now you know not like that, and they could pair him up. I don't know. I, I couldn't see that. I mean, that'd be I awful booking. I mean, you'd have to like give Rowan a new gimmick and everything to do that. You can't have Morton on his Wyatt clothes going up against the Wyatt. The best thing for them to do is to definitely get Rowan in that group because. That makes them more monstrous, and we're going towards that ministry route of, you know, and a big reveal of who Sister Abigail is, only to find out that it's Vince McMahon again. That <laughs> is what we need. That's what we need. It was me, Austin. That's what we need. We need that again. That's what we need. That, that would be incredible. I, kind of, I couldn't quite see it, but if it did happen, that would be incredible. That current day, it's going to be Steph. 
Absolutely. Steph, Steph could be Sister Abigail. I would totally be down with that. It it's better than like the other like, side of things where we get like the new guy going against Eric Rowan in like a sheep mask on a pole match. Oh, no. Oh, Judy Bagwell on a pole, though. That was epic. Judy Bagwell on a pole. Judy yeah, Bagwell. I still haven't seen that. Need to see that. Um, uh, yeah, I, th- I think it's good. I-, I hope that obviously Eric Rowan gets back in there. We've got this like this ever growing um, Wyatt family. Maybe recruit a few more. We have a reveal of Sister Abigail. Um, let's hope that's not a disappointment. I don't really know how they could do that. Like who that could be. Um, but the reference again, that whole thing of the power that be. It's like I like all that. I like the the intrigue in it. But you can only get. You can only do this well if they keep winning and they keep destroying people. They can't keep losing. Yeah, it's got to be a case of the Wyatts now dominate. Now they've got that extra member in there. It kind of goes back the way that they were originally, where they did like dominate and take out everyone. And that's something that I want to see. I think that I'm hoping it's clicked with the WWE that Wyatt needs his disciples. Otherwise, he's got nothing um, I, I don't. I, I think he needs to always have a following because I think, and I don't think it damages the guys around him as long as they stay strong. I, I really don't. And they, there will be someone that will come along and take them all out. But I mean, if they have a run for a year where they're not stopped, then it's perfect. It is. That's that's what I would love to see. I'd prefer to see that. And and do you know what? It should culminate in a championship reign. So you know they've they've taken down all the big guns to eliminate them from the title picture. And then they're you know even if it's a heel as champion, imagine that like you've got your, your Rollins in the ring. Uh, he's he's top of the world. He's as arrogant as ever. And then you have you know the Wyatt. The the lights go out. Comes in and they're all surrounded. The ring, sheet masks and everything. That that would be awesome. But, I would love to see that. So it just should work for creative. Please. <laughs> well, we say this every week. So many options. Yeah. Like it, it makes me wonder how they come up with some of these finishes. It does. It does. So I mean, yeah, uh, you haven't seen much of this Braun Strowman, have you? Yet yeah, you've just seen a little bit. I only seen the debut after you mentioned it because I didn't catch Raw this week until like very early this morning. So I, I seen that bit, kind of skipping through it. it. It totally took a surprise. I thought you were joking when I first heard about it, <laughs> especially by like the name and like not knowing who the guy was. But I think it's cool that they've brought in someone that isn't known. Like I think it's good that they're building them up rather than bringing someone that you recognise and you're like, oh, well, that's just that guy from like something else. So I think it's cool that they've brought in someone that's an unknown and it just it it's, adds to that sort of mysterious side of the Wyatt family. And I still think as well at, at a point that Bo Dallas is there for the taking. Like, they could have done well, he it. He was there for the taking this week. They, they could have done it this week. when You know when Lesnar left... They could have just had the Wyatts appear in the ring and they could have just took him away. Oh, that would have been cool. I would have preferred to see that. So, I mean, it's still there for the taking. There's still there's still that opportunity. And um, and I'm thinking, I always think back to, like you say, the Ministry. And um, I think of like Midian and Viscera. Yeah. But really weren't doing anything. And that like re, re, rejuvenized them as a character. And that's what that's what needs to be done. Absolutely. I I think they're on the right track, so I'm looking forward to seeing how it plays out. I just hope they don't squander it. Indeed. Indeed. I completely agree. And I mean, wow, we've talked about so much today. We've talked about the greats, uh, greatest of all time. We've talked about Jon Stewart. Uh, We've talked about loads of stuff. We didn't even mention NXT. We didn't. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, um, I know you've got some tickets, haven't you? Yeah, but I was was talking about like last week's interview. Yeah. Well, there's there's loads of NXT stuff as well. Uh, that that show, um, I'd say, is better than SummerSlam. Well, I haven't yeah. watched like it fully through. I've seen like a couple of matches. Now, I thought the Bailey like moment was absolutely amazing. So uh, glad for it, say as the world champion. But but probably that match could main event any show. That was like so good. Sasha Banks and Bailey sold everything. Core that I don't know. Have you seen the backwards Frankensteiner? Yeah, the, the finish looked, to it. That looks so dangerous. That uh, was insane. I couldn't believe it. Like when I when I seen that happen, it was just like, oh my god, that that looks very dangerous. She should never take a move like that ever again because she's like could shorten her career considerably if she if that goes wrong. That, it's like something you see in a video game, but you don't expect to see in like real life. Yeah, there's there's no like because um. At the time, I didn't think of it too much, but when they uh, watched like replays and people have made like gifs of it and stuff, 
the way that the way that she goes back, if her head is a little bit closer to the mat, her neck is gone. Yeah, well, it's so dangerous. That was what kind of took us by surprise because I didn't think they would go through with that move. So, yeah, I mean, uh, full credit to them both for putting on an amazing show, but you, don't break yourself doing it. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's not worth it. But it was it was amazing. The whole show from beginning to end, um, I, I do think it was better than SummerSlam. And do you know why it was better than SummerSlam? Because all the matches had finishes that didn't require not just Jon Stewart, but interference at all. Well, it's always the same with NXT, though. You always get a good, clean finish, and I think that's one of the reasons why I enjoy it so much. Uh, Apollo, the new guy, he looks wicked. Uh, is this not is, is his name actually Apollo Creed? Is it Apollo Creed? <laughs> I think it is. I'm going to just keep thinking of Rocky. So, uh, But anyway, uh, uh, Apollo, uh, if, I, if I've got that name wrong, not the first one, but uh, he, yeah, apologize. He, he looks. <laughs> wow, that's a that's that's a bad joke by even even like coming on. To that, that was a good man. one. Apologize, really? <laughs> that's his name, man. That's his name. Really? It's his uh, gimmick. <laughs> After the match, he apologizes for beating them senseless. His his he looks good. So I mean, um, NXT's in safe hands if they keep bringing through talent like this. Um, it just it was it, the whole show in Brooklyn was amazing. The crowd were good as well. Do you see the girl with the Finn Balor sign? No, I don't think I did. Google it. That's all I'm saying. I'm not going to tell Google you what it. First e- thing, everybody's got to Google it because it's hilarious. Girl Finn Balor NXT Brooklyn sign that should do you. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll be straight on that after the show. Um, but yeah, all in all, that's awesome, and it's even more awesome to find out that obviously WWE are bringing NXT over to the uk in december um you got tickets i said didn't i i have but i haven't got tickets to the special like you have oh yeah i got them it was well hard work let's be honest tickets for wwe shows in general are hard but nxt was just near damn near impossible uh well for me at wembley it was like bloody nightmare you got them on pre-sale though, didn't you? I did, but the pre-sale was a nightmare and all. Because like, you'd be on like the Ticketmaster, I think it's through like Live Nation, and um, yeah, like they released them at nine, and I like got to 20 past nine, I still had no tickets. And I was like, checking social media, people were, like shooting off at Live Nation saying, the tickets aren't there, there's no tickets there. And I was thinking the same, because I was like, refresh, 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 refresh. And nothing, nothing happening. And then Live Nation were like, we'll keep releasing them, so keep checking. And I was like, okay. But then it was like half nine, still thinking, I was thinking sold out by now, because <laughs> that's how it works. And then all of a sudden, boom, I've got two tickets. I don't understand how pre-sales and ticket sales really work. I think they just release them in drips and drabs and you're yeah. lucky. It's not about first come, first serve. It's almost like the luck of the draw. So I'm just happy I've got tickets, to be honest with you. Well, regardless, like, wherever you're sitting, I think it's going to be an amazing show. If they'll release any more tickets, I think I'll be straight on that to try and get them. It, it's going to be the best. And I think I've checked on, like, StubHub and, like, the tickets are going for, like, double the price already. So... You know, yeah, but you can guarantee like there'll be people making money from it. It's it's gonna. I mean, that's the trouble. It's all the bots and stuff that nick all the tickets. But I've either way, this the, uh, if it, the takeover show. Obviously, I'm going to probably that. It's going to be wicked. I can't can't wait. I think a few other YouTubers are going. I think Brodos are going. Um, J Man did mention it, but I'm not sure if he's going yet. He hasn't confirmed it. I'm sure he'll confirm it in the comment section. But yeah, anybody that's going to these NXT events, you're in for a treat. That's for sure. Yeah, it should be an amazing show. The whole tour itself, like, it, it's going to be full of incredible matches. I just hope, like, Sasha doesn't take that reverse Frankenstein out on every one of them. Do you think she's going to be? Oh, I think she's been confirmed for it, hasn't she? Someone said I, that she confirmed it. I think she will be there. I think, like, we'll get quite a few of them. Like, especially being a tour, we'll get, like, different people on different times. As, as long as it's not Eva Marie. There's nothing wrong with Eva Marie. Although she got bossed by... Everything wrong. She got bossed by Carmella when Carmella, I think, did the moonwalk. That was like... <laughs> that was cool. Uh, I, I really want to see Enzo, Big Cass and Carmella, to be honest. I think that's going to be the best reaction ever. I'll be recording that reaction, that bada boom, realest guys in the room. If that happens at London, I'm just going to explode. It's going to be wicked. That would be awesome. It's so good when you've got the interaction on the entrances like that. Like, that entrance will just be amazing. 
I think I just think it's Enzo Amore's voice is just so distinctive. He just just wicked, and then it's like Big Cass is like spell it out for you. Um, but I just I can't wait. Can't come quick enough. Well, it's December, so we've still got a little way to go. I know. And we've got Raw. Got November. Raw. Yeah, so so uh, if you guys don't know, and if you are going, uh, Raw in Manchester, me, Smack Talks, uh, Wes from the Games Dungeon, and also um, the former, the former, who's who's well, who's locked in the basement as we speak, with Mike Tanay being whipped repeatedly <laughs> like a government mule. Weeds is going to, 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 to Manchester, so that's a rarity. That'll be awesome. We'll have to like record We Talk straight after it with a forward. We will. We'll have to. We'll have to do some sort of We Talk special. I'm planning to try and do like a couple of like video vloggy things uh, whilst we're up there because I think it'd be quite a laugh as well. So I can't wait. It's going to be awesome. So if you're going to Manchester, let us know, and uh, you can say hello, and Absolutely. I can say hello to you <laughs> if you want that to happen. Be beware of weeds though, because obviously he's friends with Mike Stanay, so that's dodgy. Drag you off to the dungeon. No one wants to go down there. Can I put my cat there? No, she sounds like a good fan, so leave her alone. Damn Cena fan. Damn Cena fan. So that kind of brings us to a close once again for We Talk. So obviously you've been very busy uh, with your, your SummerSlam escapade. Uh, any any shameless plugs for you this week? Um. Well, I've got a preview of WWE 2K16 that I put up last night. So it's quite a long video. It goes into quite some depth um, in all the changes that we're seeing with the pin system, submissions, um, breakout. That's an awesome new feature, by the way. Um, so check that out. That gives you like a load of details. And then I'm also going to put up a video a day, which kind of covers all the news I've broke over the past week while I've been away. And then I'm going to get back on track on my second channel with Laura Croft, as I've kind of fell a little behind with that. You're going to get back on track with Lara Croft. Nice. Absolutely. <laughs> You're jealous. Uh, depends. Depends what you're up to, isn't it? <laughs> Reading tombs. Then no. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, from from my side, um, obviously tonight we have got Saturday night main event SummerSlam. Um, all going well. It'll be up about eight. All going not well. It'll be up about ten. But that depends on YouTube if it wants to process or not. But. Um, yeah, it's going to be up tonight in in by hook or by crook, uh, so it should be good. There's plenty of a massive card. Uh, let's just quickly try and run you down the card. We've got five matches to start with. Five, five, five. Um, I think it's the first one that we've done that have got five matches. All the others have had four. Uh, we've got Cena against Randy Orton, and uh, well, um, John Cena has to defend his Money in the Bank briefcase against Randy Orton. Um, so that's going to be interesting. Will he be able to walk out with the briefcase? Uh, we've got the main event, which is a uh, triple threat between Seth Rollins, uh, Daniel Bryan, and uh, the champion, Kevin Owens. And we've got a few other matches in there, but, you know, they're all on Delzinski.com, so go and check them all out. So that's tonight, and, uh, yeah, I'm off to continue editing. <laughs> You'll be an amazing show, though. Hope so. Hope so. Hope uh, it's been it's been a bit of a struggle to get this one done. There's been a lot of editing, so fingers crossed it all goes well. I'm sure it will. Cool. Let's know by the comment section below what you think of today's we talking points. We got Seth Rollins, Sting, yes, become champion. Um, we got all the details with Lesnar, um, Undertaker. Who do you think's the greatest of all time? That would be interesting to know. And then we have the the new deal with the White family and the Dudley boys. So yeah, all sounds good. Um, that kind of brings us to a close. Are you going to catch us later? I'm going to catch you later. Cool. And I am signing out. Hi, wrestling fans and gamers. Velvet Sky here. And I just want to say, I've been hearing a rumor that Delzinski.com is the best place for video gaming and wrestling content. 